what, what can you do with, with simple materials and how can you still make it something nice? Without AC, how to live in this place? Uh, Humidity is, you know, 90% and <laughs> temperature is 90 degrees. A passive uh, patient kind of project here. This design is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> I'm Trevor Boyle, architect in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I have a design for a tiny home called the Breezeway House. Based upon uh, originally a pandemic need, uh, something to be a clean home, uh, overflow flexible. You could either bring it from hospital sites to residential uses. The key idea is flexibility. It's disaster relief. It's for anybody who needs a house, really. This project was done purely as a passion project, uh, weekend kind of work. Uh, my full job, I worked in the day at Hunt and Brady Architects, a fairly large firm, a still localized, primarily in sort of larger scale projects. Healthcare, commercial, education, sort of the, the big holy trinity there. This was my first tiny house. Uh, I did win the first place for the professional tiny home competition from the Center for Architecture in Sarasota. I, it kind of excited me. That was a good chance to kind of work on a really small project and really fine tune and dig into the, all the details. Uh, you're doing the big commercial projects for the hospitals by day and doing the tiny home residential uses by night. Around the time we were getting all these stories of these frontline workers who were exhausted dealing with not only these new workload demands, but then would have to come home and try to find a way to distance themselves and quarantine from their own loved ones in their house. Yeah. Looking at a way to provide either a bit of respite in between shifts inside of a hospital or something that you could unroll into a, a residential neighborhood and have give somebody a place to live. It's going to be a temporary shelter. It's something that's still near their families and friends and loved ones. Uh, Sarasota is a, it's a coastal city. It's a big hub of architecture. It, it was known for, for sort of a Florida modern. Some of the inspiration from this castle comes from as well. Uh, part old school Florida sort of dog trot cracker architecture um, with a little bit of the Paul Rudolph umbrella house situated there in Sarasota. Started with this was looking at maximum dimensions we can get for something mobile. So it comes out to be about eight and a half of wide by about 13 foot six to the top, which includes the elevation off the ground, and then about 38 feet wide. So that way you could kind of fit within sort of a, I use sort of a parking lot dimension. That way, if you're gonna unrolling it into a large overflow space and parking, parking it in a hospital, uh, it kind of fits within that, that grid. Fairly lightweight, you can kind of pull it with a standard pickup truck. Setup process is fairly easy. You roll it up, unfold it, the canopy and the deck sort of interlock together, kind of like a zipper. So it unfolds up with the, the slats in between. Um, and then the deck folds down to hit the ground with a ramp where you can kind of come up for accessibility. If you have more than one, you can offset them and stack them up. So that way the canopy and the deck is basically interconnect in a way. Battery storage for electricity um, and water tank storage. The idea of you can collect Rain water, or you can, if you're running low, you can fill it up with water for to kind of get you through and maybe into the next rain. Florida, we got pretty good rain storage coming through. You can refill that up pretty well. And lots of good sun, so for solar panels on top, try to make it easy for you. So you don't have to deal with the manpower of having people have to set up things too much. One side separated for more private functions, your sleeping, your bathroom, the other side is more of an open living area, kitchen sort of seating kind of functions. That center space becomes your sort of decontamination area. And it's like a scrub vestibule where you can kind of wash off anything. It's sort of easy to access, no one has to touch anything. The, the blue side is sort of, it's the more private space. So when you come in to that, that blue side it would be restroom, it would be your sort of sleeping space with like a little desk there. Um, so it's your dressing, your bathing, and then an area that maybe if you had someone come by to visit you, it would be off to that left and that orange side, which is sort of a sitting area. Um, along that end there is a, uh, around the big window is sort of this like seating nook with a bookshelf and there's a, a chair or two on the inside as well. Some of that Florida cracker architecture, the first sellers came through, you know, without AC, how did they find a way to live in this place? Uh, humidity is, you know, 90% and <laughs> temperature is 90 degrees. Sort of based around that, there's the, the dog trot style, which is known for the, the breezeway, which I just named it after that concept of having that sort of open air section between the voids and the volumes of Paul Rudolph's 
uh, umbrella house with this elevated separated uh, canopy that covers the entire house and extends out over the, the pool area. You can see there, there's that separation there between the ceiling plane and vents uh, that go along the interior space. So that way, along the full side of the elevation, uh, it's airflow all the way through. They kind of pull these breezes in. Um, uh, there's three windows on this project uh, on either end and then a larger one in kind of that little living area. They're all supposed to be operable as well. They can kind of fold up, allow cool breezes to come in. Warm air gets carried out by that, that wind through it. Um, it helps kind of keep that ventilation going through the space there. The floor plan is almost like, like a mechanical air cleaning machine. But for all these people in these hot climates here, it's pretty common to include a a really high area just so that hot air can get pulled out. That's, that's the whole con thing you're combating here in Florida this whole time is how do you <laughs> how do you stay cool? Door that goes off to the private side and the door that goes off to the more public side. Um, on, they're just sliding barn door kind of styles. Uh, this, this is a view inside of that sort of that scrub area there. In healthcare, it is really important um, to get that fresh air exchange just to kind of keep the inside environment fairly clean. You kind of want to get as much dead air out as possible. There's going to be adjustable vents on the inside so you can actually open up for the airflow. So those can be closed while you try. Do as much as we can with passive ventilation and cooling. Toilet system is, is built out forward a little bit. The sink actually sits uh, behind it. And it, built within that base there, you have room for a tank. Uh, you can have some fresh water, sort of gray water storage here, are over the wheel wells. So since the edge of the, the outside face of the walls meet the wheels, you have that wheel well depth on the inside to contend with where you can't simply walk through, they stick up higher. So since I already had to bump, bump that wall out, mm. it seemed easy, like, well, that whole space above the tire, basically you can use it for, you can, serve, you can slide any electrical panel sets on one side or water storage on, on the other side. Take, taking advantage of lost flat floor area. You don't want to be stumbling over these wheel wells anyway. Just trying to keep it fairly low enough to the ground, not have to be raised up like a U-Haul yeah. kind of level height there. Find something low enough to the ground and meet like an ADA ramp slope it was really important. Two feet off to the, the height of that trailer bed there. So it interlocks blocks like it's it's like sort of taking up the same space and it's like every other. Ideally, if you kind of let the the weight of it kind of actually lift it up and let them work together, you just kind of start it in motion and then it kind of goes. Its own weight will actually lift it up because it's being pulled from the opposite direction. Like anyone can open a U-Haul door with a chain, so. And just partner with U-Haul. They can sponsor it and. It's already built on the U-Haul base. The U Live. Yeah. U Live Breezeway yeah. by U-Haul. <laughs> Backside's fairly clean um, since most of it's used with storage and tanks and other functions. There's really not a whole lot of views or anything coming from from this side. Window coming from the bedroom space um, and then from the one behind it, you kind of get a peek, you get a look into uh, sort of that living area there with a little bit of the, the ramp coming down right underneath uh, the window. We're doing all these huge, you know, hospital building like bed towers here. You know, if we could reuse some construction materials, if we partner with sort of these larger entities and they order five, 10 percent more materials that become your materials for these tiny homes, you now you simply buy the extra pieces, uh, you know, a trailer frame and some appliances and solar panels, the one-off items. But most of your cost has already been, been kind of picked up by these organizations that already have investment in the community. But what can you do with, with simple materials and how can you still make it something nice? The idea was I was trying to get durability, simple, easy. We don't need ex super expensive, costly materials here. What kind of parts and pieces can you find left over at a construction site? Working, partnering with different systems uh, and getting in early and like when they're ordering materials. And if you can partner with them, they're ordering in bulk anyway. Cladding, visualizing here just as sort of like metal sheets, essentially. So it could be a, a pretty lightweight extruded uh, skeletal system there and cladded pretty standard and on the inside. You'd get some, some plywood <laughs> inside as, as a sheer wall. If you are in a, a pandemic situation, your loved one can, you know, like, they, they, don't, they don't have to turn their house into a quarantine zone. You can roll them out to existing infrastructure and give people a uh, habitable place to stay that's still, you know, it's their property, it's, it's near where they know and where they love. How does this evolve? What does this look like? And not the hot, humid climate, but the hot, arid, or what does it look like? It's wherever the wind know, blows. Cold weather environment. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the most innovative aspect of this 
presented solution? It's the clean core. It's that sterile unit in the center. It's your way kind of in the middle of the project. Yeah, well, you typically you're enter at one end or the other. This one, you're, you're coming into the center. It's it's open air designed around decontamination, purely a passive uh, ventilation kind of project here. This design is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that. I'll add that tagline to that. Floor plan reminds me, I don't know if it's intentional, but it kind of reminds me of like anatomy of the lungs. You have two kind of chambers in like the, the esophagus or some sort of middle hallway <laughs> and the two chambers and it's sort of yeah. like, it's cleaning the air, you know, bringing the oxygen in. It's time for you to go back and learn some more anatomy now. British architecture back to the anatomy and the human scale. Yeah. So you're kind of raising money right now and finalizing a budget on building a prototype. Correct. Yeah. And at the very least, raising awareness, getting the idea out there for grants or funding for building prototypes. It's finding people who are also passionate about stuff like this. And, you know, I'm, I'm not here to make money. I just want to try to help people, you know. Trevor, uh, thank you so much for the tour of the Breezeway today. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. I really appreciate it.